Hey everyone, Philip here, and today I wanted to talk about Intelligent Scenario Lifecycle Management in S4HANA Cloud. ISLM is a machine learning lifecycle management tool that allows you to train a model and use it for inference. It's available on S4HANA Cloud and on S4HANA on-premises. Let's start by navigating to the ISLM section on Fiori Launchpad and creating a new scenario in the Intelligent Scenarios app. So firstly, we will create a new scenario name. We will go with the standard YY1 option and create a demo sales example. In this example, we'll be using some underlying demo sales CDS view data in order to train our model and then later use it for inference. So we've put in a scenario name and a description, and then we'll add this scenario Currently in S4HANA Cloud, you are able to do regression and classification uh, type intelligent scenarios. And it uses the embedded approach. If you look up the documentation, which will be linked below, uh, which uses APL based models. So essentially we're using the underlying HANA database in order to train and infer this particular model. So here we put in a name for the uh, regression model we put in a description, assign it to a package. In this case, I'm just using the test YY1 default package. And then we'll use the training data set and the apply data set as well. So for these two um, options, the training and apply data set, I'll be using the demo sales CDS views that are available. Of course, if you're doing this in a real life customer environment or in a particular business scenario, you would select um, the CDS views that are related to your uh, business scenario. You'd need to ensure that you have enough data. You'll see later on, there might be a warning about the amount of data available for these data sets. So you'll need to make sure that you have enough data available within your data set for training and inference as well. In this case, it's a demo scenario. So we'll use the demo sales uh, CDS views and these CDS views should be available in your system to use as well. So let's search for and select our train and apply data sets that we'd like to use for our model. We select each of these. We then also have a target and some keys that we can select. And finally, we'll select the output configuration that we'd like to use for our model. In this case, I'm just selecting all three of them so that we have the option of seeing what's available for the model training. Okay, let's add this regression model to our intelligent scenario. And once the regression model has been added to the scenario, we can then navigate around and look at what inputs, outputs, and of course the model we've just created are available within this intelligent scenario. So we're packaging this all together in a particular model, which we'll then publish and go into the intelligent scenario management app in order to train and activate this particular model that we're setting up now. So here we see the inputs that are available. We can also see the outputs that are available and that are applicable to the data set that we've selected. We can see the model that we have. Um, of course, if you have additional models available at a later date, these would be visible within here as well. So we're now ready to publish this particular model. And once we've done the publish step, we can then go into the Intelligent Scenario Management app in order to train this model and then use it for inference. Okay, so now we have a published model within our Intelligent Scenario app. We can go into this uh, model and have a look again at some of the settings. We can do a quick refresh of the settings before we then go back out of the Intelligent Scenarios app and into the Intelligent Scenario Management app in order to train this model. 
Okay, so now we go back out to our Fury Launchpad and we select the Intelligent Scenario Management app. We can see the model that we've just published and now we need to do the training of this particular model. We see some settings load and we see that we have a number of training filters available um, that we could select if we wanted to for our training. In this case, we're just having a look at what these training filters are, but we're not going to select any of them. Um, we can then close up the training filters option and select train in order to train this particular model. The model is currently being trained by the underlying HANA database. We can see the status in the top left as training. We can see what the wait time was before the training began to execute. And once the training has taken place and completed, we should see a status of ready, which then means our model is available to be activated and used for inference. So if we go out and in again a couple of times, eventually, okay, we'll see that the status has now changed to ready. So in the quality information tab, we can see we have a few key metrics available. We have a quality metric of about four and a half stars. We have prediction power, prediction confidence, and then lower down in the debrief section, we can see some of what the key influences are for this particular model. So this just gives us some information about how good the model is in terms of the training that's just taken place. Now that we have a trained model within the Intelligent Scenario Management app, we need to go back into the previous screen and we see that we have the activate option in order to activate this particular model. That's the last step that we need to cover off before we're able to use this particular model for inference. So let's again select the model with the radio button on the left hand side and then select the model for activation and the model is then activated after some time and it's now available to be used for inference we go back into the particular model in the intelligent scenario management app we can see for this model that the status is currently activating after some time we should see that status change to active and now our model is finally available for inference in an upcoming video, I'd like to show how we could use a communication scenario in order to leverage this trained model and possibly call this model from an external API if we so choose to. So thank you for joining me and hopefully this was useful to you understanding how to use and leverage ISLM in S4HANA Cloud.